we're going to go right away now to our um, music report from, uh, we will hear from Sandy, Sandra Barry, the president of the Maine Music Educators Association, speaking with Caitlin Young, who probably needs no introduction to any of you. Caitlin is a, another one of our superstars. I would say she's a veteran educator before her time. She hasn't been uh, around as long as some of the others, but she's already made a huge mark and she has already been teacher of the year um, in 2018. So we'll get to see both of those women and hear them talk about music and then see a wonderful video that uh, Vicki Cherry has put together. So enjoy. Thank you, Susan, for that introduction. Sandy, it's nice to get to see you again. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to to digging into this conversation and kind of building on some of the things that we've heard from some of our other arts colleagues as well, but kind of giving that music perspective. So when you think back to the past year, it's uh, definitely clear to say that the world has been rocked by the pandemic and that's my music pun for the day. Um, and so just like, I'm not sure if I can hear you. I'm sorry, Sandy, can you to say something? Not saying anything important. Perfect. Caitlin. Just want to make sure because I want to make sure everyone can hear your stage words of wisdom. So when we think about how the pandemic has affected our our life, it has given us a chance to pause and reflect and kind of reframe and let that refocus on what's really important in our lives. So in your conversations with colleagues across the state, can you share a little bit about what has maybe been revealed to us about what's really important in music education? Thanks, Caitlin. It's great to be here with you today, too. We've always focused on our individual students, and this experience has underscored for us even more so. It's about our individual kids, where they are learning now, how they are emotionally, and how they engage, react, and respond in music. Music provides a unique answer to the critical question we're all asking now about social emotional learning and health. It can engage individual students where they are in the moment by reaching them in new ways with relevant and culturally responsive content. One of the hidden blessings of the pandemic is that we, our students and our teachers, are creating and sharing in vastly new ways. By nature, music is collaborative and it thrives in a social environment that fosters positive and productive interactions from all participants. And we're realizing, again, music's for all of us. It serves us. It's not only for our future music educators who we are anxious to welcome to our fold, but and, not, and also not just the talented or the lovers of music. We all need music. We've always been committed to high quality music education for all of Maine students. And therefore now it's our collective responsibility to address the challenges of access and equity in order to meet our mission. You'll see highlighted in our video in a moment how this all works in real time. It's the process of music learning, including investigation, collaboration, expression, and belonging. And, and finally, this process results in experiences and products that need to be shared collectively. And this ensures multiple benefits, some of them for the individual, but also for the class or the ensemble, the entire school and the community at large. Absolutely. And I feel like you touched on those spheres of influence, how it affects us as people, how it affects us as an ensemble, as it were. And so, you know, I've even hearing from our colleagues how we teach our students through music, how we teach our students through the, our arts disciplines. And so I think that what you're um, hearing is that the pandemic might have affected the how we instruct students, but it hasn't affected our mission to ensure high quality music education for all of our students. So as we're thinking a little bit about the how, um, the reality of the situation is that this year has presented some challenges and some that were very unique to the, um, to the visual and performing arts, especially as we think about music education, some of the guidelines, recommendations that help to keep us all safe. So can you talk a little bit about how music educators and music students, most importantly, have responded to these unique challenges over the past year? Well, in one day for all of us, that focus changed. And although the challenge was the same, there were as many answers to this as there were unique music programs in our state. Last year at this time, we're all hard at work with our students preparing for concerts and informances and all of their festival music. And, and since that time, music teachers have done what we've always done. We problem solved, planned, and focused on our students. But our reality now is starkly different this year. Yes, there are music teachers who have face-to-face -face time with their students in the daily schedule, 
but up until December, they could not play their wind instruments inside. And it was just late, late last week that we finally received the great news that singing can return inside with the updated guidelines. We're very grateful. But there are classes that were put entirely on hold this year and they will not meet. There are teachers assigned to teach entirely different subjects this year. And there are teachers teaching the musicians fully remote through online platforms. Access, scheduling, and teacher availability are real concerns that we continue to wrestle with. Even while we work to hone our technical skills, deliver that great music content in novel ways, and to work to create authentic music making opportunities for our students to spark and maintain their engagement and involvement in the art. Absolutely. And so when I, when I hear you talk about all of those different ways that people have responded to the challenge, you know, it reminds me of how through all of today we've heard about the creativity in education being first and foremost, um, whether it's our educators or our students. So while our students and our educators are quite resilient, um, I've, we've heard a lot about our mission, um, our job to ensure quality um, music education. We've talked a little bit about the, the how, um, and I guess, you know, with all of the talk we've had about the value of the arts, we've heard from so many students and colleagues, Let's think a little bit about our collective responsibility to reinvest in music programs because obviously they're going to look different like you mentioned. So, you know, who who is involved? How do we get involved? Music making is a collaborative experience. So tell us how to get involved. Well, first off, it's our students who've led us to this point and we need everyone to join us and we invite you on this mission. Parents, administrators, community members, music educators, policy makers at the local and state level and even beyond. This approach must be initiated locally, but it must be mindful, deliberate and collaborative in the des design and the programming and the scheduling. It's the only way to su su successfully restart our music programs. Music teachers need to have a real seat at the table and their message must be heard in their school systems. This effort requires sustained focus by the local decision makers and an understanding that we need time and support to enact the plans and to see them work. Our music classes have been crafted over decades of dedicated work. They cannot return overnight. The presence of music in school curriculum must be valued equally to that of all other subjects with the access, trained faculty and financial support to serve all students. Another gem that was discovered, conversations that have started with important stakeholders, including the Department of Education and the Maine Principals Association. These alliances must continue their work and arts organizations need to join forces to share their resources and expertise to better serve the community. One action we can all take time to do now is visit our classrooms near you safely of course <laughs> live or remotely music is meant to be shared so come visit and see the work with us thank you sandy i feel like we need to break into some high school musical where we're all in this together just kidding um we do have another video to break into <laughs> so can you share a little bit about what we're going to see in the video in a moment you will see in the video uh, pre-pandemic music classrooms full of joy, creativity, and chaos. And then after the hard transition we all faced last March, you'll see the variety of ways educators and students have answered this challenge with creativity, a mind to safety, and with students at the center of the effort. In this piece, um, there's an original piece of music from an eighth grader, Gretchen in South Portland, written in response to this time and her experiences. You'll also see the safety guidelines in actual practice. Classes being held with snowbanks in the background, distancing at 10, 14 feet inside and out, and masks on faces and bell covers for instruments. Look closely and look closely at the, the expressions in the eyes as well, because that's what you can see. Oh, the smiling eyes. Thank you, Sandy, for this conversation. I really appreciate all of your time and energy that you've spent as ad an advocate for music education and kind of giving us tools to help you along the way. So let's roll it to Jason.